Formula One teams rely on one thing more than any other, data. Modern Grand Prix cars have over 300 sensors measuring everything from brake temperature to gear changes to parts of the track where their driver can go faster. And now Formula One style data isn't just the preserve of the likes of Vettel and Hamilton, because over the past year or so, there's been an explosion of off the shelf gadgets that provide performance data for your car and your driving. These are the pick of the bunch. The AIM Solo, the Q Stars Racing Club, and the Race Logic Performance Box. I'm also testing how a six pound phone app compares. They all mount to your windscreen and use GPS tracking to provide data. Today, I'll conduct three tough tests in this 225 mile an hour Noble M600 to find out which is best. I'll test them all against a 15,000 pound race technology data logger. It's used by Le Mans race teams, so we know it's always right. Now, whilst my main job is trying to put 650 horsepower down onto the tarmac, all this kit is going to tell me how long it takes to get to 60. Immediately, the first differences are apparent. The race logic and aim gadgets trigger automatically, but I need to start the other two manually. iPhone app, I have to press test to start. And the Q stars, I have to press a countdown that launches me in three seconds. I've got to be ready. Three, two, one, go! Oh, too much wheel spin! Then I launch this car! Oh, I love this car! I don't want it to just naught to 60. I want to do naught to what? 120, 130, 140, 150! This noble is just... Right, Q Star says 5.379 seconds, Solo says 5.18, and. And I can't read the other two screens without some help. The iPhone app reckons it was 5.1. So I've got 5.3, 5.1, 5.1, and the race logic says 4.9 exactly. So, which gadget timed my 0 to 60 run correctly? Data logger Kieran has the results from our benchmark race technology unit. So, I've got anything from 4.9 to 5.379, and the real answer is 4.97. 4.97. The race logic is the only device to correctly record my acceleration, but its small screen makes it quite difficult to read. OK, time for some lap time tests. We've set the start finish for the race logic of the solo and the cube star I have to press as we start the lap to set it going now. The phone app doesn't track your position, so sits this test out. <sighs> Turbo tweeting behind me. The fast right leads into a tighter right. <laughs> Apex Tiff, treat that throttle with a lot of respect. Oh, oh, oh. Set up, oh, 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 it's over. Right, what's going to tell me what as I cross the line? So, Kieran, I ended up with a 112.3 and two 12.4s. What does race technology tell us? Uh, in the middle of those, 112.33. Uh, Again, the Race Logic Performance Box proves fractionally more precise than the other units. But will our devices cope with our final and most violent test? Time for the lateral G Force test. Race Logic all set to go. The uh, Q Stars also ready to go. I have to start the iPhone app. Get the back ready. Whereas the poor old Solo isn't entering this round, it doesn't record it. Surprising. I took the Noble to the limit and beyond to try and get the highest reading possible. 1.25 on the iPhone app. 
The race logic provides a lower reading, suggesting less violent cornering. The Q Stars only records a graph rather than a figure, which isn't very useful. So I only got two recordings in the end, a 1.15 and a 1.25. Which was nearer the mark? A 1.13 was the, the maximum oh. G-force. So the old race logic was on the number, and the iPhone was a bit too excited. <laughs> For £6, the app is a great value way of showing approximate acceleration and G-force measurements, but can't test lap times. The Q-Stars has the clearest screen, but manually triggering it for acceleration and lap times is irritating. The £250 Solo provides the most detail and is good value, but as it can't measure G-forces, it's picked into second by our winner. The more accurate Race Logic Performance Box. This little gadget might have a small, difficult to read screen, but it comes incredibly close to matching the accuracy of a £15,000 professional machine. This is the best way of getting Formula One star telemetry in your car. <laughs> <laughs>